the sacred assembly of the Feast of Tabernacles. A blessed autumn feast has come. May God bless you abundantly through this feast. Receive much blessing of the Holy Spirit. As you know well, this is a feast to give thanks to God to our heart's content after harvesting all the crops in the autumn season. This is why we are in a festive mood every day during the Feast of Tabernacles. Personally, I feel that among the feasts, the Feast of Tabernacles contains the most abundant and overflowing joy and happiness. After Moses received the second set of the Ten Commandments, he came down from the mountain and delivered God's will to the Israelites. He delivered God's will to them to build a tabernacle where the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments would reside. The people's hearts were so moved that they diligently gathered all different kinds of materials for the temple. This is how the work of building the tabernacle began. The gracious work of building the temple and how the Israelites received great blessings from God are recorded in the Bible. This is the origin of the Feast of Tabernacles. Two thousand years ago, Jesus came to this earth and diligently gathered the saints of Zion, the materials for the spiritual temple, through the Feast of Tabernacles. Isn't it written in John chapter 7 that Jesus shouted, Receive the Holy Spirit on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles? The most important points contained in the Feast of Tabernacles are receiving the blessing of the Holy Spirit and completing the temple, the dwelling of God. From a spiritual point of view, we are gathering the spiritual material, our lost brothers and sisters, from Samaria and to the ends of the earth, to complete the construction of the temple. This is why among the feasts, the Feast of Tabernacles is so significant. Therefore, this Feast of Tabernacles is truly a joyful feast. The Holy Spirit was also promised by God on the Feast of Pentecost. Then what about the Holy Spirit promised on the Feast of Tabernacles? What feast is celebrated before the Feast of Tabernacles? Isn't it the Day of Atonement, the Feast of Repentance? Since we receive the Holy Spirit through our repentance, the grace of the Holy Spirit that is given to us is truly abundant on the Feast of Tabernacles. I pray all the children of Zion will receive abundant blessings of the Holy Spirit through this year's Feast of Tabernacles. There is a reason that God likens the Holy Spirit to rain. Why did God liken the Holy Spirit to the former rain and to the latter rain? When it rains, the ground gets wet, and all the trees, plants, and vegetables receive and absorb it. As they absorb the moisture, they are able to grow. Isn't this the function of rain? From this process, they are able to bear fruit. Therefore, I pray that through your earnest prayers, you will receive the Holy Spirit that enables you to produce beautiful fruits and make this a blessed year to complete the spiritual temple. Now, let us take time to see all these teachings recorded in the Bible. Let us read Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, what begins? The Lord's Feast of Tabernacles begins and it lasts for seven days. Today is the fifteenth day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. Starting today and for the next seven days, we are coming before God to keep this holy Feast of Tabernacles. Let us see how the feast was celebrated in verse 39. So beginning with the fifteenth day of the seventh month, after you have gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days. The first day is a day of rest, 
and the eighth day also is a day of rest. On the first day, you are to take choice fruit from the trees and palm fronds, leafy branches and poplars, and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. They took choice fruit from the trees and palm fronds, leafy branches and poplars, and laid them in the temple courts or on the roofs. This is how they made the booths and rejoiced before God for seven days. This is the Feast of Tabernacles, which we are keeping today. As I mentioned earlier, the Feast of Tabernacles is a feast God prepared to commemorate the work of building the tabernacle. Now, through the book of Exodus chapter 35, let us look back 3,500 years ago to learn about the origin of the Feast of Tabernacles. After receiving the second set of the Ten Commandments, Moses came down from the mountain and delivered God's will to the Israelites to build a tabernacle where they could place the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. Let us see verse 20. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service, and for the sacred garments. From this day, they began to gather materials for the temple one by one. Verse 22. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins dyed red, or hides of sea cows brought them. This is how they continued to gather everything they needed to build a tabernacle. Some women even made or spun whatever was needed. We can see how they continued to gather materials. Let's continue with verse 25. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breast piece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Everyone began to gather the materials needed to build the tabernacle with a joyful heart. Let us move on to chapter 36, verse 1. So Bezalel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left their work and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order, and they sent this word throughout the camp, no man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more, because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. God delivered His will to the people to build a tabernacle as a place to keep the stone tablets of the covenant. Since the people were so thankful for God's grace, 
and the forgiveness of their sins and transgressions. They brought an abundance of materials to build the tabernacle. As they brought more than what was needed, they were restrained from bringing any more materials. On the Feast of Tabernacles, the Israelites took palm fronds, branches from myrtles and poplars, and laid them in the temple courts or on the roofs of their booths. By doing that, they commemorated their ancestors, stayed in booths, and they built the tabernacle. As they brought an overabundance of materials, Moses restrained them from bringing any more. This is to show us that there will be a prophetical time when we will be told to stop the gospel work. Let us go to Nehemiah chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 13. On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families, along with the priests and the Levites, gathered around Ezra the scribe to give attention to the words of the law. They found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses, that the Israelites were to live in booths during the feast of the seventh month, and that they should proclaim this word and spread it throughout their towns and in Jerusalem. Go out into the hill country and bring back branches from olive and wild olive trees, and from myrtles, palms, and shade trees to make booths, as it is written. So the people went out and brought back branches and built themselves booths on their own roofs, in their courtyards, and the courts of the house of God, and in the square by the water gate, and the one by the gate of Ephraim. The whole company that had returned from exile built booths and lived in them. From the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until that day, the Israelites had not celebrated like this, and their joy was very great. Day after day, from the first day to the last, Ezra read from the book of the Law of God. They celebrated the feast for seven days. And on the eighth day, in accordance with the regulation, there was an assembly. It is recorded in the Bible that the Feast of Tabernacles was also kept in the time of Nehemiah. There is a reason God had the Israelites celebrate this feast with different types of branches, such as palm fronds, myrtles, and poplars, and place them in the temple courts and on their roofs. The trees are used to represent people. In the same way, the temple materials needed for building the tabernacle also represent people. We can confirm this in the book of Jeremiah. Let us see chapter 5, verse 14. Therefore, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. Because the people have spoken these words, I will make my words in your mouth of fire, and these people will be made what? Wood. All the different types of wood mentioned here represent people. Here, the wood describes people, and as we read earlier in the book of Exodus, the temple materials also describe people. Therefore, both wood and the temple materials refer to people. Jesus showed that we can gather the temple materials by preaching to find our lost brothers and sisters. Just as the Israelites offer the temple materials to God, we can present the spiritual materials to God by finding our lost brothers and sisters through the Feast of Tabernacles. In order to fulfill this mission, the preaching festival needs to take place during the Feast of Tabernacles. When Jesus came 2,000 years ago, He set us an example of preaching from the first to the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. By doing so, didn't He fulfill the prophecy of the Feast of Tabernacles? All the laws in the Old Testament foreshadow the work that Christ would carry out in the New Testament times. In the Old Testament, the Israelites celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles by gathering branches such as palm fronds, myrtles, and poplars. 
to place them in the temple courts and on the roofs of their booths. As previously mentioned, God described people as wood or temple materials. All of these are to show that ultimately the most significant meaning of the Feast of Tabernacles is finding God's people. Let us see John chapter 7, verse 1. After this, Jesus went around in Galilee, purposely staying away from Judea because the Jews there were waiting to take his life. But when, what was near? The Jewish Feast of Tabernacles was near. Let us go to verse 14 to see what Jesus fulfilled through the Feast of Tabernacles. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts, and what did he begin to do? He began to teach. Here we can see Jesus preaching the word. The Jews were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having studied? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Let us move on to verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the feast, the feast here is the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Here again we can see Jesus preaching. From a spiritual point of view, isn't preaching how we gather materials for the temple? Heavenly Father taught us the meaning of the Feast of Tabernacles by also calling it the Preaching Festival. Since Father appointed the Feast of Tabernacles as a feast to preach, all the churches around the world will arise and hold a preaching festival starting from today until the last day of the feast. Let us offer many beautiful materials of the Holy Spirit to God through this year's Feast of Tabernacles. This last age of the Holy Spirit is called the Age of the Feast of Tabernacles. Since the Feast of Tabernacles signifies the age to gather the temple materials, Jesus showed us how to gather the materials when He came to the earth. Let us see the ultimate purpose of His coming to the earth through Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek, and to, what did He come to do? To save what was lost. Doesn't to seek and to save what was lost mean preaching? Let us move on to Mark, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save what was lost. But in Mark chapter 1 verse 38, he said, I have come to preach. Doesn't it mean that the work of salvation can be accomplished through preaching? Let us look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This also means that we must find all our lost brothers and sisters. When we reflect on the meaning of the feast, doesn't it mean that we should find all God's children who are the materials of the heavenly temple? We are living in the age of the Feast of Tabernacles. We must find all our lost brothers and sisters who are the materials of the temple and bring them to God. Earlier we read in Exodus chapter 35 
that this work could only be done by those whose hearts were moved. As they gathered the material on the first day, the second day, the third day, and the fourth day, and so on, the people's hearts started burning more and more. Since their hearts and sincere faith toward God burned more and more, they gathered and offered materials for the temple to the point where they had an overabundance. As a result, they were restrained from bringing any more materials. To receive God's grace, we should do the gospel work while we have time. Isn't it true that the materials of the temple will be more useful if they are offered to God while they still can be used for the construction of the temple? Let's continue with Acts chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. God said, Be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Doesn't it mean to preach? We, who are going to be saved, are likened to the materials of the temple. Let us see how this is explained in detail in Ephesians chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 19. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built. How? Together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. According to Revelation chapter 3, what will God make those who overcome in the temple of God? Some become pillars, and some become beams, and some play the role of windows, and some a part of the roof, and others a part of the foundation. We are being built together in Jesus to become a dwelling in which God lives, that is, the temple. I hope that we will quickly find our lost brothers and sisters, receive our Heavenly Father, whom we miss so much, and return to the eternal kingdom of heaven. I pray for this to take place soon. It is not easy to do this with our own strength. So we must ask for the blessing of the Holy Spirit of the latter rain, saying, God, I need the power from heaven. When we try to work with our own strength, we will quickly succumb to our limitations. However, if we are clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit, we can put all our heart, mind, and soul into the work of finding our lost brothers and sisters without becoming weary. Therefore, God allowed us to ask for the Holy Spirit by praying early in the morning and in the evening during the Feast of Tabernacles. I pray that you will receive abundant blessings of the Holy Spirit of the latter rain through the Feast of Tabernacles, and that all the Zion family members will joyfully keep this feast. I hope that you will have a gracious autumn feast by bearing many beautiful fruits and receive abundant blessings of the Holy Spirit. I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.